What is up guys? Welcome to our week 5 team builder for the GBA D-League. This week we are taking on our good friend Donaki, also known as Jaden Yuki on the uh, Discord sphere, and uh, his Rosa Radenborg. And uh, let's go over his team really quickly, you guys are going to see it on the right. He's got Magirna, which is one of his Zemons, Garchomp, Tangrowth, Suicune, Darmanitan, Aerodactyl, Frostlass, Roserade, Licky Licky, Mega Absol, which should be mine, that's my mascot. And uh, we got uh, Stunfisk, which is his secondary Zemon. So, looking at the matchup, this is actually going to be one of my toughest matchups all season. Uh, probably, if not the toughest, for sure. Uh, he's got a lot of scary offense that beats my offense, and a lot of annoying walls that can set up and beat me. So specifically, Suicune. That is, like, probably the biggest threat to me. So... My team, it might look a little bit shaky, but I know what I want to do with it, and uh, it's very interesting because Dan kind of predicted what I would end up bringing against him, so uh, let's get right into it. First one we got on the team is going to be Alphonse, the Metagross. We've got an adamant Metagross here with uh, Clear Body, of course. Cassib Berry, we'll explain that in a second. Earthquake, Bullet Punch, Thunder Punch, and Zen Headbutt, so I played around with this set quite a bit, uh, but the idea behind it was always the same, and it's my biggest check to his Magirna. So... Essentially, the way that I am EV'd, which I'm about to bring up right now because I didn't have that up yet, uh, but I have uh, quite a bit of spadef. Specifically, let's see, uh, 252 special defense, so maxed out. Uh, not with a careful nature, though. I am adamant with uh, 204 EVs in attack, uh, 44 HP. You guys already saw it on screen, and I have uh, 4 speed as well. Uh, the 4 speed was initially there for when I had agility, but I switched up agility to Zen Headbutt because I do want something to hit the Roserade for super effective damage, uh, if that's my only way to deal with it. Uh, but specifically, like I said, this is here for Rose, uh, for uh, Magirna, and essentially what I can do is live a plus 1 modest max special attack, Ghost DMZ Shadow Ball, Never Ending Nightmare, uh, with the Cassid Berry right after rock damage so it does a max of somewhere around 93.2 percent to me so it is incapable of uh of knocking me out and i can hit magirna really hard with earthquake into bullet punch now if he's max hp like let's say he runs a trick room set uh that will not knock him out however i do have something to revenge the magirna afterwards i just got to make sure that it doesn't get up a bunch of soul hard boosts and is able to sweep through my team that's what i'm trying to accomplish with this metagross set uh, also with the rest of the moves, obviously I have Thunder Punch on there, uh, specifically for the Suicune as well as the uh, Mega Arrow. Uh, I can hit it a little bit harder than Bullet Punch, I believe, with Thunder Punch. And then uh, Zen Headbutt, as I explained, is there for the Rose Raid. It's also the hardest thing that I can hit his Licky Licky with. And uh, the biggest problem with this set is that it's easily Pursuit Trapped by his Mega Absol. A lot of my good breakers and a lot of my uh, decent walls against his team are completely shut down by Mega Absol. And this is the big problem with... Uh, the matchup this week is that that thing is a huge problem to me uh, for what I'm trying to accomplish. But anyway, let's move on to the next Mon. So this is Mega Metagross, Alphonse, and uh, next up we have Toshiro the Pillaswine. So this is actually the first time that I'm bringing both Metagross and Pillaswine to the same game. Toshiro's here basically just to set up rocks. Uh, it's got Earthquake, Ice Shard, and Icicle Crash. Icicle Crash is specifically there for the Tangrowth. I am faster than uh, even a slightly speed invested Tangrowth with my 36 speed investment. We do match base speeds. Uh, I have 252 in HP, 156 in attack with an adamant nature, 20 defense, and 44 spadef. So actually, the defensive investment on this uh, Pillow Swine is enough to live Mega Absol's Jolly Superpower into Jolly Sucker Punch. And uh, I'll be able to knock it out with Earthquake into Ice Shard. And obviously, it's Sucker Punch goes before my Ice Shard. So I need to make sure that I can live both those hits uh, one after another. And uh, the fact that he's dropping his own defense, if he does end up going for superpower on my Pillow Swine, uh, I do knock him out straight away with Earthquake. So uh, that's why the investment's there. Uh, I changed up the, uh, the attack investment quite a bit on this thing. It wasn't this powerful uh, initially when I first made the set. Uh, if you guys do hear my friends in the background, uh, we came out from a, we came back from a night out last night. They stayed over, so uh, they're just chilling in the back, so don't mind them. But uh, anyway, the reason that I made this thing so strong was because I wanted to make sure that I could break Suicune's sub, specifically a 216 defense bold Suicune uh, with 252 HP. I can break its sub with Earthquake because I don't want to switch out on Suicune and give it a free sub. I have very few things to break a sub, and the things that I do have to break it do not want to either be in on Suicune or take any damage damage whatsoever so if it's setup fodder is pillow swine it's no longer setup fodder uh, as long as it doesn't burn me i can break it i can consistently break its sub with earthquake ice shard is there of course for the mega guard chomp as well as the aerodactyl as a revenging move uh the roserade the uh the absol we already went over and icicle crash of course like i said can hit tangrowth super hard as well as stunfisk uh and i can get a potential flinch on stunfisk 
and then knock it out with the uh, the following earthquake. So. Uh, and of course, Earthquake is there for Magirna. I have a lot of uh, damaging moves to Magirna on this team, so uh, that's pretty much uh, Pillow Swine. Like I said, first time that we were bringing Alphonse and Toshiro in the same game. Uh, EV Light, of course, I didn't say the uh, the item. Also, the ability I just want to go over real quick. So uh, I had a lot of mocks for this game, and uh, I only ever got taunted once, uh, and it was the one time that I actually didn't have Oblivious anymore, and I had switched it over to Thick Fat. So hopefully it doesn't happen that Dan brings either like a taunt uh, Mega Aerodactyl or a taunt Frostlass. Uh, and if he does that he doesn't taunt my pillow swine knowing that it's potentially oblivious But I do like having the thick bad because it forces Darmanitan into a move like superpower to be able to knock me out As opposed to flare blitz unless it's max attack adamant choice band um, That would be the only way it would still knock me out with flare blitz But anyway, that's uh, the reason that I decided on thick fat over uh, oblivious Moving on, we do have Gamagori, the Mega Blastoise. So, uh, the EV spread on this thing is another thing that I switched up heavily. Uh, I was very, very defensive at first, and this is another thing that I needed to absolutely break Suicune's sub. Uh, I didn't have Dark Pulse initially, but I do need it on there because Suicune is such a problem. Also, I added a lot of speed. I have 100 speed EVs uh, just to make sure that I'm outspeeding a 36 speed Suicune uh, and even a little bit more because that was brought against me in a mock and I wasn't able to get off a Toxic and Suicune was able to sub in front of me. Uh, I do have Rapid Spin on there because Frost Last is a little bit of an issue. Uh, I can Spike Stack me, so can Roserade. I want to make sure to get rid of those spikes. And Skull just hits his team pretty neutrally across outside of the Tangrowth, which I don't really expect to come. Uh, everything else is hit pretty hard by Scald, except maybe Roserade, but then that doesn't really want to take a Dark Pulse unless it's bulky, so... Uh, and Roserade does allow in uh, my next Mon, which I'll go over in a second. Uh, we, we are bold, we have 76 uh, defense EVs. Originally I was EV'd to take uh, Garchomp's uh, plus 2 Outrage without Rocks up, I believe. Uh, now I can't do that as well, but uh, Garchomp is kind of easily revenged if it is a Swords Dance set. As long as it's not carrying a Salic Berry, of course, uh, then it would be a little bit more of an issue, but as long as I keep it sub broken, I do have something to revenge it. Uh, either Metagross with its Bullet Punch, or the next one on our team, which is Ace, <coughs> excuse me, the Infernape. I am bringing Choice Band. Uh, I do not like bringing Choice Specs and Choice ban Banded Mons. Choice Scarf is uh, is my choice item of, uh, of choice, usually. But uh, in this case, this thing can do a lot of damage, specifically to the Suicune, because Suicune is what I really want to weaken. And if his main switch into Infernape is going to be Suicune, uh, I want to make sure that I can break it as hard as possible. And Jolly Choice Band not only allows me to outspeed the Garchomp if it's max speed, but it also allows me to potentially two-hit KO Suicune after rocks even a max defense variant with my close combat. I have U-Turn on there because I, I pressure out a lot of things like Tangrowth and Roserade, and I want to see, first and foremost, what his initial switch into my Infernape is so that I can play in consequence. Mock Punch is there as amazing priority, and this is what I meant by I'll be able to revenge Garchomp with a, a priority move if I keep it sub broken. Choice Banded Mock Punch easily knocks out Garchomp, even a very bulky, uh, bulky Garchomp. Uh, it also revenges the Magirna after Earthquake into Bullet Punch from Metagross, uh, and it's a very good late game cleaning move as long as the Frost Lass is dead. So uh, I also need this thing specifically for the Licky Licky because that thing could be a huge issue. Uh, you guys see that on the right, it looks really derpy, but it can be a big threat to me, especially if it gets up a few curses. So I definitely want to keep it in Infernape around as long as humanly possible, but its main objective is going to be to break Suicune. Now you might be asking, why would you want to break Suicune? Well, the next mon on our team is uh, something that I am bringing for the very first time, which is Z Quillfish. Uh, you guys see that it's level 100 on your screen, it'll be toned down to level 50. Uh, this is just the way that it had to be genned, specifically because it has Swords Dance on it. Uh, it's very complicated because Swords Dance is a, a Gen 3 move, and you cannot run Aqua Jet on it either. So uh, we are Swift Swim this week, Naughty with uh, 252 attack EVs, uh, 20 in HP and 48 in defense. This is actually to make sure that Max uh, attack Jolly Scarfed Darmanitan with it locked into Flare Blitz can knock, cannot knock me out in conjunction with Absol's Sucker Punch, So uh, even with Rocks Up. So as long as I make sure that I'm at full health when I start setting this thing up, if I set it up in front of a choice locked Darmanitan and Suicune is low, I should in theory be able to break through his team because I only really need Z Waterfall for either a full health Garchomp or a full health Magirna if they are max HP. So uh, everything else is pretty much going to go down. Like Licky Licky doesn't like taking plus two waterfalls in the rain. Uh, Rose Raid's going to drop to Poison Jab. Absol only has Sucker Punch to hit me with. Uh, so I guess Stun Fist could get a static on me if it does come, but I don't see Stun Fist coming to this game. I have way too much that pressures it early on. Uh, I guess it's a decent check to Thunderous, but other than that, it doesn't really do much. And uh, the reason I have Destiny Bond here as the last move, originally it was Explosion, but I changed it to Destiny Bond because I can outplay uh, Absol's Sucker Punch. I can force 
force it to knock itself out, basically. If he goes for Sucker Punch as I go for Debond, the first one will fail. And then if he hits me before my Waterfall hits him with another Sucker Punch, he will drop as well. So this is in the case where my Quillfish gets really low and uh, I'm up against Absol and I want to knock it out to make things easier for, let's say, Metagross or, uh, or even the next Mon on our team, which is only outsped on his team by the Absol and the Mega Aerodactyl. And that is our Thunderous and this is our Rain uh, Setter this week. Enaru is coming with a Damp Rock uh, with Rain Dance. Uh, of course, Prankster makes sure that I can get up the rain under any conditions. I uh, tie with Absol in its priority bracket uh, on on its Sucker Punch, and uh, it doesn't hit me because I'm using a status move, so I'm, I guaranteed get up the rain. I have Thunderbolt, Hidden Power Ice, and U-Turn on there. Thunderbolt is, of course, for the Suicune, for the Mega Aerodactyl, uh, for the, uh, it's not the Mega Aerodactyl, sorry, the regular Aerodactyl, and the Mega Absol. It's able to hit them as hard as humanly possible. Uh, Hidden Power Ice hits Garchomp as well as Tangrowth and Roserade pretty hard. Uh, Garchomp almost dies from full. I don't have a boosting item, of course, because I am Dambrock, and uh, U-Turn is there to basically gain momentum on things that that I know I'm scaring out, uh, like let's say a Choice Man did Darmanitan, or a, uh, a not set up Suicune, uh, I can definitely gain initiative off of them with U-Turn, so uh, it's pretty straightforward, I'm just trying to sweep with my Quillfish, this little Blowfish is gonna hopefully put in work this week, uh, I did go over TVs, right, yeah I did. Uh, also the speed is uh, is faster than um, Scarf, Max Speed, uh, Jolly Scarf, Garchomp at plus two, and it's also faster than uh, Max Speed, Tim, and Magearna. So I'm able to outspeed both. Um, I can outspeed Magearna without the rain up, and I can outspeed Garchomp even if it's scarfed with, with the rain up. So uh, pretty straightforward. I'm just trying to win with the Quillfish, and uh, we'll see how it goes. But this might be my first loss of the season, guys. Uh, if it does happen, then it happens. Uh, I'll be glad to lose to Dan, honestly. He's, uh, uh, he's a good friend of mine, and uh, I know he's a good player. He drafted a really solid team. I think uh, it's definitely top three up there with mine and Jolt, uh, if I had to... Uh, to make an opinion on that so yeah that's pretty much it guys uh if you did enjoy make sure to leave a like down below make sure to catch the game tomorrow at 2 p.m eastern uh standard time that's 11 p.m for uh, pacific and uh it's also 8 p.m i believe for uh, most europeans so that's when it'll be going up and uh hopefully we are able to clutch this out and keep a 5-0 record after beating jolt i just want to keep going and keep pushing and just secure my playoff spot and i think i need six to seven wins to be able to do that so uh let's hope we can pick this one up but anyway uh that's gonna wrap it up guys again if you did enjoy make sure to leave a like down below subscribe if you haven't already and i will catch you guys later ciao